Divine Truth, Spirit Experiences Discussions Experiences of people who have lived on Earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. The title of this personal experience from spirits is Rodney Field's Resistance to God's Definition of Masculinity, during which Mary channels Rodney, a first sphere spirit from Australia, who describes the difficulties of and his anger about releasing his earth-based ideas of masculinity and what it means to be a man, and discusses with Jesus his feelings and fears. This session was recorded on the 8th of August 2017 from 2.25 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. All right, so now we've, uh, we've got uh, three more people who would like to have a chat about their experience that they're going through. This, these experiences are more raw now because they're more the experiences they're going through now rather than the experiences that Sonia had to remember, which were years ago. And also she's released the emotions, so she can't barely remember them. Whereas these experiences are a bit more raw and closer to the bone because of they are being more about what's going through now. So, and the first person we're going to start with is Rodney. So let's uh, see how Mary goes channeling Rodney. Okay. Yep. I'm Rodney. How are you doing, Rodney? Well, Would you like to I'm told it? you'd like to know how I'm going. <laughs> Truthfully, yeah, but let's just get a little bit of background first. Like, okay. um, how long you been in spirit world? Not that long. Yeah, when you say not that long, can we? Twenty years. Twenty years, yeah. And where did you come from when you were on Earth? Aussie. Yeah, you're Australian. Um, yeah, and I was I was in a motorcycle gang. Yeah. I love my bikes. <laughs> when you say you're in a gang, were you in a violent gang or just a gang who used to ride No, motorbikes? just, no. <laughs> but I, yeah. Yeah. I kind of liked saying I was in a gang. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. I suppose, like, like I'm, I suppose I'm bringing it up because it's something that uh, I'm having miss, to deal with now. Did you miss the bikes when you passed? <laughs> well, I kind of like being tough right so sort of an image thing yep yeah i and it's really hard for me now because yeah. i'm having to face yeah. that basically it's it's like my manhood I feel yes. like I'm losing my manhood. Sort of losing your masculinity. Yes. <laughs> and I felt like having tats and having a bike and looking after my bike and going out and riding my bikes and, you know, wearing my vest and having my beard, that it was all about... It was so, how I felt kind of safe, actually, being a man. Yeah, yeah. And... I'm finding it very hard <laughs> yeah. to see, and people are trying to help me see, yeah. that it's not true. That it's not an expression of, of masculinity. No. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, what? What is then? The F is an expression <laughs> yeah. of masculinity. Yeah. And what's so wrong with what I did? Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. And why why should I have to give it up? And, <clears throat> like... Uh... So is it is it right to say at the moment you're feeling pretty, like, almost frustrated? Is that Would that be the way you feel? Yeah, and sometimes I get really angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to be violent. Yeah. And, <clears throat> like, I used to get violent with people on Earth sometimes yeah. when I felt like they told me I wasn't a man. Yeah, so, you know? so as if they ever suggested to you that you weren't manly, you, you, that that would fire you up. Yes, mm. yes. Yeah. And I had ideas about what it meant to be a man and what it meant to be a woman and how the house should be run <laughs> and 
how I should get to have time away from my family just with guys because it's just the way. It's a guy thing. A guy thing is. Yeah. And now people are trying to tell me that I, that that wasn't on, that that wasn't right, and that actually it made me kind of less of a man, or that's what I feel like they're telling me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That I that I feel like they're telling me that I was less of a man. That you weren't for living doing up to your full responsibilities. Everything that man. I thought that made me a man. Mm. Yeah, and my responsibilities as a man, but not only that, just that I was somehow a weak man. That's what I feel like they're saying. I don't know if that's what they're saying, but yeah. I feel like they are saying that I was a weak mongrel <laughs> by doing what I did yeah. when I actually feel like I held up my end of the bargain. I was never violent with my family. Yeah. I always made sure there was food on the table. I just had my things I did. I taught my boys about bikes. I taught my boys about how to be tough. Don't take shit from people. Otherwise, they'll walk all over you. Mm-hmm. But don't also, you know, don't break the law. Don't mm-hmm. be bad to women, you know. Mm-hmm. So, I so feel like things. I was a good man. Well, I feel like I was a good man. Mm-hmm. But I, it's, I'm coming to see mm-hmm. and people are telling me that there's something wrong with what I did and I don't want to know what was wrong. Right. And see, you're saying some of what was right. And, and I, I just want to feel like it was all right and rack off. <laughs> and I'm putting that politely for Yeah, the sake so that, of... that's how you feel about the people who are helping. But, but there's obviously a reason why you're listening to the people who are helping anyway. What, what's the reason why you're with? What do you notice in those people? Like? Yeah, well, it's not just... I feel sad because I can't get to my wife. Yeah? I can't get... So she's, she's in the spirit world. And I feel like there's something wrong when I go to my kids right. on earth. It's yeah. something bugs me. Yeah. yeah. I don't feel good. So, the, <laughs> but so, I don't... so you're not feeling that happy where you are at this stage? No. no. I, I feel a kind of emptiness growing. Yeah. yeah. That's, well, that's probably what started this whole thing. Is that then what called, got you to listen to some people? Yep. Uh, so what, why do I feel like I feel? Is that what started the conversation for you? Yeah, I probably, I probably couldn't have said that because yeah. I'm not very good at saying feelings yeah. um, or even noticing feelings, but something about that feeling happening for me Somehow I started a conversation. It's like there was new people around me or something. Yeah. And then we just got to talking about my life on earth, really. Yeah. And I started to talk to them about what I love. And then they started to sort of, they were kind. Yeah. Yeah. uh, About just kind of helping me to see some things that I still don't really know are true or not i don't know if they're true i don't understand them i don't really want i don't really want to know the details and you don't really want it to be true either at this stage no no so that's really honest i feel honestly i feel like someone's castrating me i feel like i'm losing my manhood yeah yeah no i get it although i've never gone through that really (laughs) (laughs) but i get what you're saying you know like a lot of people on earth particularly men are taught that you know a certain way of life this is how a man lives his life and, and he shouldn't pander the woman and he shouldn't you know what i mean he, he's got a he's got to have a pretty pretty yeah. definite way of seeing things for himself yeah and i've got to say like i understand you're a different bloke mm-hmm. and you're a different kind of man and i knew I knew other blokes, and it's not that I felt like you guys... Judgmental of them. No, I just felt like this is... uh, Can I suggest you... I don't actually don't understand it very well. Yeah, can I suggest you were judgmental? (laughs) That's it. Not not that you did you were thinking that you were no. but, but your very opinion about yourself automatically imposes the judgment on the other. Do you understand what I mean by that? No. If you have an opinion that a man should hold on to his manhood, he should ride a bike, he should, he should, you know, not let people push him not around. Not let people push him around. He should, you know, when he's got to bop someone in the nose, he, he should do it. You know, that kind of feeling. You're really saying to all the other men who don't do that that they're not really being a man in your eyes. That's right. really what you're saying. Yeah. So, well, and if my boys, yeah. 
I taught my boys to be tough, and if they weren't, there was a problem. Yes, and you, you felt quite confronted if they weren't, and you often would then get quite firm with them, right? Yeah, Which is... I felt it was for their own good. Yes, but um, obviously this is uh, what's injuring the relationship with the boys. Now, I don't want to turn this into a counselling session because obviously you, you people who are helping you <laughs> yeah. are, are helping you to see these particular things. Yeah. Um, I suppose what I'm illustrating to, thanks for coming, because it illustrates to people how you can sort of think everything's going good while you're on earth, but then you arrive in the spirit world and then you get to a point after 20 years, like you say, where you feel quite dissatisfied with how your life is. You want to get to your girl again mm -hmm. and, and you want to see your kids and things like that. And things are restricting you from doing that. Yeah. And, and that's causing unhappiness for you. And then you start questioning, well, why? Why can't I go and see them? What, 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 you know, what's stopping me? What, because on earth you'd be able to just do it whenever you wanted, right? Yeah. And I suppose they're just reminding me that, yeah, I'm supposed to tell you how I feel. Yes. And I feel like I don't want to do this. Yeah. I, these guys seem nice enough. Yeah. Who've come to me. And sometimes I think I'm starting to see their point, but then something else happens and I just feel really angry about it and I just feel like I don't want to. Mm. I don't want to know what they're saying. Yeah, Rodney, have you, have you, have you ever asked them? It was Rodney, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever asked them, Rodney, what their life on earth was like, the guys that are trying to help you now? Uh, sometimes they try and talk to me about it, but yeah. I don't really believe that they yeah. were ever like me, exactly. and it makes me angry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when they even suggest it. Yeah. Now, my suggestion to you would be just to let them show you some pictures of what they were like. Yeah. Rather yeah. than rather than sort of deny that they were like that. Um, yeah. yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It would help you a lot just in terms of your trust of them. The yeah, problem is I don't know, like, I don't want to be like them. and Like they are now. Yes. No. And so <laughs> them telling me that yeah. makes me angry makes because feel I like... feel like I'm going to end up like them and I don't effing want to be like them Why? because it feels like they're pussies. Yeah. And I don't feel safe unless I've got my things that make me a man. Can I just ask you, though, do these guys seem like they don't feel safe? I don't know. I don't even want to talk to you about it. <laughs> That's okay. I just, this is what happens. I have to take time out. That's all right. And We're then they no come problem. back and then we try again. But my I, question can help you a lot. What's your question? If you, if you ask yourself, do these guys seem like they're afraid of anything? No. You, by your own admission. But I'm afraid of stuff yeah. and I don't, I don't want to give up this shit so that what's... makes me feel safe. No, but let me, let me put this to you. Who's a stronger man? A man who doesn't feel scared of anything or a man who feels scared of things? I don't know. I don't know. I, nobody knows I feel afraid of things when I have my stuff, when I've got my bike, when I've got my things. Oh, when I, do I my wouldn't stuff. say that nobody knows. <laughs> That's your feeling that nobody knows. You follow. But it doesn't mean that nobody knows. Like I'm sure the guys that are helping you know what your fears are. They, they could tell you easy enough what your fears are. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What I'm trying to get at though is this. To become a real man, we've got to, in the end, release all of our fears. And if you live by fear, in the end, are you a real man? Okay, all right, but... It's a good question, isn't it? Yeah. I just need to find a way yep. to not have fears is really what it's what I can see. Like, yeah, but let's look at these guys. And I don't, <coughs> I don't like what they're proposing about it. Yeah, but let's look at them. They obviously don't have fears. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, so I feel like they're okay to not have the stuff that I've got because they don't have fears. But they had the fear that you have. Yeah, and that's a bit that I past. don't, I just, that makes me angry when you talk about that. And <laughs> yeah. when they talk about that, I get angry. Yeah. So that's, that's good that you're realising that. What I'm, it's great that you've come to talk because a, a lot of the guys on earth who are sort of uh, are in the uh, being a man, what it means type of uh, emotions, they would see straight away that they're going to have to work through some fairly deep fears associated with it, right? Yeah, well, I never thought about this when I was on earth. Of course. I yeah. never did. And what's pulling you through it at this stage is your, you, you can't see your sons and you can't see your wife. So, so. And I feel. Uh, so the longer you resist this process, the longer it's going to be before you see your wife and you see your sons. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I feel what, kind of hollow. Yeah. And that's what's weighing on you. Yeah. So, so it's a very disconcerting place. How, how, how long has it felt like this for you? Ten years. Ten years, yeah, long time. Ten it? years of kind of feeling hollow until yeah. these guys even came, and then I then I started to get angry. Yeah. I wasn't angry before then. Yeah, yeah. And the, for the first ten years, I I, I didn't even feel anything. <laughs> yeah. It took ten years for me to start to feel kind of hollow. Yeah. And now it's just started. It's just started. Like yeah. I don't even know how long it's been that I'm I'm just feel angry all the time yeah. i feel and then like i get angry they go away i am still angry for a while and then it kind of dies down and then like i start to feel hollow again and then they come back and remind me and then i just feel angry again yeah. about what they're saying because i do not want to do what they're saying and, and sometimes it makes it even hard for me to follow what they're saying mm -hmm. and I just want to have an argument with them. As soon as I start, they go away. And so I just sit here raging yeah. uh, until then it dies down. It dies it. down and the whole process starts again. So what if you tried something different? It doesn't make sense to keep doing the same thing over and over again. No. Well, the last time that they came, mm -hmm. They said I just needed to have it out, you know, just like have out the anger, mm -hmm. just like just let it loose, let myself say and feel and just let out what I was so angry about. Mm -hmm. And I haven't done that yet. Yeah. Yeah. I'd encourage you. Is to that, do that what you're going to say? Yeah, I'd encourage you to do that. That's, you know, that that's uh, I suppose the danger of what you're doing is this. You can come up to the anger every time, feel the anger, go through this cycle, withdraw, step down from it again, come back, do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. You can keep doing that for years if you want to, but it's not going to help you progress and it's not going to help you see your wife or see your kids. It feels, it <clears throat> feels like why does it feel so bad or the reason well, it's scary to to even just do that. It's because of the false beliefs you were brought up with as a child about having emotion in the end. Like, as you can see, like, having emotion is, is, uh, is a, oh, on earth you're sort of taught not to have it, right? Aren't you? You're sort of taught you know, certain good emotions, you have them. All the other stuff, like if you need to cry, well, nobody cries, right? If you're a man, what are you taught? You're taught you can't cry, generally. No. Right? And, and really that's what causes a build-up of rage in the end because there's things we need to cry about. There's things we're afraid of. There's things we need to work our way through. We need to get rid of them, but, but if we don't get rid of them, we uh, finish up just living in this never-ending cycle of anger about them. You see what I'm saying? And while you're in this never-ending cycle of anger about them, you're not going to see your family. You're not going to make much progress. The key is to get beyond the never-ending cycle. So there's beliefs in you, emotional beliefs in you about, about having to feel sad and having to feel afraid hmm. that need to be experienced. And the quicker you get to experiencing them, the faster this will go. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And that... That, and if you choose to wait another 10 years, then it'll be another 10 years. But 
the reality is you can get through this process in a few months. So yeah, okay. it, it could be a lot shorter, you know what I mean? Yeah. It just depends on your choice in the end. I've just got to, I've got to do this thing, don't I, where I just let it, I just, I just go off. You've got about. to go, let your anger go off, really go off properly, and then let your fear go off properly, what, what you're really scared of, because that's going to be uh, uh, pretty confronting to feel what you're scared of, because most tough guys don't want to feel what they're scared of, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But if you let that happen, this process can go from 10 more years to a few more months and that's it. And it's going to be unpleasant and it's okay. You know, there are, there are things that have to be let go of here that you, and, and the key thing to remember is that a lot of it came from how you were brought up, you know, how your dad brought you up. Which is something that you've yet to really feel too much about. Right? Yeah, and I, yeah, that hurts. Yeah. Yeah, that hurts. Yeah. And I... And a lot of your fears... I tried to do it different with my boys because it hurts yeah. how dad was. Um, yeah. yeah. And how your dad brought you up has caused a lot of the inside fear inside of you. You see what I'm saying? And, and if you can see, well, you didn't deserve it and you didn't, you know you didn't deserve this kind of treatment and you didn't deserve his, his, the way he treated you. Um, and you, you can be a bit more relaxed about having to cry about it or having to, you know, firstly feeling afraid of how he treat you because he was a pretty fearsome person, right? And then, and then let yourself have some cries about, you know, how he treated you. That cries that uh, need to happen because you didn't okay. have them when you were little and you weren't allowed to. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And if you can let yourself go through that and see that it's not your fault that you feel the way you feel so much, you know, but holding on to it, that's the thing you've got control over. You don't have to hold on to it anymore. And if you can let yourself go through that, then it will be a lot quicker process. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. But thank you, Rodney, for your bravery to come and have a chat about it. Because a lot of people, you know, as you know on earth, you know, even just to admit that, you know, I'm angry as... <laughs> Oh, hell, you know, it's pretty hard for most people, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. See ya. Cheers.